Hello everybody. Today I want to show you a game that you can use to practice your multiplication, which fortunately is also practicing area. So for this game, you need a piece of graph paper, you need two dice, they can be six-sided ones like this, or if you happen to have ten-sided ones because you've played Dungeons and Dragons or have a board game that has these, ten-sided dice work great too. I'm going to show you today using the six-sided dice because I bet that most of you have these in your home, especially if you go raid some of your board games to find them if you don't have any sitting around loose. This can be a one-player game or a two-player game. I'm going to show you how you can do this on your own, and then at the end I'll explain how to add in extra people if you have someone who wants to play with you. For this game, our goal is going to be to see how many turns it takes us to fill the whole page up with math. So we're going to roll the dice. Got a 1 and a 4. That means I need to draw a rectangle that is either 1 down and 4 across, or four down and one across. You can choose either way. I'm gonna do one down and four across. And then inside of it, I'm gonna write the math problem. One times four equals four. I colored in four squares. Then I'm gonna go again. I got a four and a five. Four times five is 20. Now I could put it way over here, but since my goal is to see how many turns it will take me to fill in the whole page, I'm gonna squish it right up against it. Oh, and up here I'm going to keep a tally. I took one turn. This is my second turn. I'm going to see how full I can get it in 20 turns. And I think I'm going to switch to a marker. All right, four times five. Well, I'm going to share the four going this way because that feels like that is going to fill it in the best. And then five down. Four times five equals 20. Roll again. 4 times 6, 4 times 6 is 24. I'm going to put that over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 4 across. I know that 4 times 6 is 24 because I've memorized my math facts. If you haven't memorized your multiplication facts, you could look at this space and think, well, I know that that line is 6. I know that 2 6s is, is 12, 2 12s, and then add those together. Think about different ways that you can break this up. You might also break it up by covering up the top section and saying, well, now I have four times five. Fives are easy, five, 10, 15, 20. Four times five is 20, plus four more is 24. However you need to figure it out is good for your brain, but try not to just count the squares. Try to at least figure out a way to break it into smaller math problems. I'm gonna stop now because I think you've got the idea. If you were doing this with two players, you would want two different colors of markers, and you could do one of two things. Either you could each have your own game board, and you could be racing to see how much you could each have filled after, say, 10 turns, or you can share the same game board. If you share the same game board, your goal is to get the largest end area. So you might roll, let's say you're the red person right now, you roll five times two is 10. Let's say I wanna get in the way of this person's blue stuff. So I'm gonna do 10. Oops, I drew too far. All right, we'll just do it down here then. Five times two is 10. And we're gonna keep going, taking turns back and forth, back and forth, filling in the space until we get to weird spaces where there's not enough space left. If I rolled, let's really quick fill in a ton of this. Let's say all of this is filled in, this is filled in, this is filled in, this is filled in, and let's make this our border. Okay, let's say that's all that's left is here and here. Well, if it's my turn and I roll three times six, clearly those two spaces are not gonna hold three times six, which would mean I wouldn't get a turn. I would just pass the dice back to the other person. They would take their turn and see if they could fill this space. And when we got to the very end, we would want to total it up. So we would say, all right, the blue person got four in this space, 20 in this space, 24 in this space, and let's see, this is five times six, so 30 in this space. And we'd want to find out their total. Oh, 108. All right, let's check the red person. Red got 10 in this space. 
this is 7 times 5, so 35 in this space. This is 4 times 6, so 24 in this space. And this little one down here is 3 times 1 is 3. All right, let's see what these ones got. 9 plus 3 more is 12, carry the 1, 1 and 1 is 2, and 5, 6, 7. So in this game, blue definitely captured more space than red, but that was kind of a fake game that I just threw together to show you. You can choose if you want to do this on your own or with other people. If you do it on your own, just see how full you can get it in a certain number of turns, or keep going till you fill the whole page. If you look at the whole page and you think, that is way too much space, then just start your game by folding the paper in half and only use half a sheet. Just like we do sometimes when we do art that fills the whole page and it feels like it might be too much if we did the whole sheet, try doing just a half page. This is great for practicing your math facts and this is also reminding you how area works. So if you feel like those are things that might be good for you to practice, um, PS, your multiplication facts are great for anyone to practice go ahead and do that. And if you're someone who you know doesn't really know your sevens, eights, and nines yet, and you're still just learning, maybe trying to get your fours, I would suggest you stick with six-sided dice. If you've gotten to the point where all of your times ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes are getting fairly easy, if you have ten-sided dice, then go for those. That way it will challenge you to practice your sevens, eights, and nines. If you don't, the sixes will be okay too. Whatever you have around will be fine. If you have all sorts of random dice at your house from different games, maybe you want to try this using 20-sided dice. That would be some serious multiplication. It'd fill your page really quickly, but you'd be doing some awesome math in the meantime. Whatever you choose, have a good day. We're getting really close to the end of the year, guys. So if you need, try and find a way to make your math a game so that it's easier to practice as your brain is getting a little bit, you know, summery feeling. Know that I miss you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, everyone.